Today we're going to learn how to hash and dehash using PHP code. And the reason this is so important to learn is because in some cases inside our websites, we build applications that allow for users to go to a website and then type in information that we then save inside a database. Now, because we save data inside a database that the user provided, in some cases like with a login system, we need to make sure that some of the data that the user types in is unreadable inside the database. Because let's take an example where a person forces their way into our database and reads all the information, we want to make sure that some of the data, at least the sensitive data, is unreadable and doesn't make sense. So we need to be able to take information like a password if a person were to sign up inside your website and make it unreadable and then insert it inside our database. And then once we do actually need to log in the user, we need to take the password and then dehash it so we can actually see what it looks like and allow for them to log in. So what we're going to go ahead and do today is we're going to learn how to hash and dehash using the PHP function called password underscore hash which is a really strong one-way hashing algorithm, which currently support the hashing method we're going to use called bcrypt, which is an algorithm that is built into the PHP language, which gets updated as time goes on, which makes sure that the bcrypt method is always up to date. So compared to other hashing methods we used to have in the past called MD5 or SHA-256, this one is always up to date and should be used when you want to hash passwords or some other kind of information inside a website, okay? Now, one more thing I want to mention regarding the password underscore has function we're going to go ahead and use is that salt is included inside this function. So in case some of you might be asking, well, shouldn't we also salt the password? Then I can tell you that the salt function is included inside the password underscore has function. So you don't need to worry about it. Now, for you people who don't actually know what salt is, it's basically when we add a random string to our password before inserting it inside the database to make it even harder for people to figure out what the password is. So... Don't worry too much about it if you haven't heard about it before. Just know that salt is included inside password underscore hash. Now, as you guys can see in front of me here, I have a very basic index.php file. And inside of this file, we're going to go ahead and include the password underscore hash function. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a couple of things about it, just so you guys know exactly what we're going to do with it once we do actually start using it in real applications. So inside my body tags, I'm going to create the PHP tags. And inside these PHP tags, we're going to go ahead and create a echo. We're going to go ahead and echo out test123, which is going to be a pretend password that we're going to use in the future. So let's say a user types in a password called test123. Then I'm going to go ahead and echo out a break, just a regular HTML break. And then underneath here, I'm going to include a third echo, which is going to echo out the hashing function we're going to go and use in this episode, just so you guys can actually see what it actually does to our password once we do actually hash it. So we're going to say we have a function called password underscore hash parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, we need to include two different parameters. The first one is going to be the password that we want to hash, which is test123, which is up here. So I'm just going to take it and put it inside as the first parameter. Then the second parameter is going to be the method we want to use. And right now we have two methods. We have bcrypt and we have something called crypt underscore blowfish. Now we're not going to get into crypt underscore blowfish, but we're going to be using bcrypt for this lesson here. So we're going to say we want to use password underscore default, which is the bcrypt method. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this and go inside my browser and then refresh it so you guys can actually see what actually happens inside our website. So as you guys can see right now, we have two different pieces of text. We have test123, which is the regular password. And then after hashing it, we have this long gibberish string that we have here. So as you guys can see, if I were to go inside a database and then see this, I can't actually tell what the password actually is. And as you guys can see, each time I refresh the browser, you guys can see it changes, meaning that it's going to get randomized each time we use the password underscore has function. So the basic idea here is that we want to take a password when, for example, a user signs up inside a website and then do the hashing function to it and then insert the has password, which is this one, inside the database. Now that also means that once you do actually create the database, we need to insert a user into. When you do actually create the password column, you need to make sure you can at least have 60 characters inside the column. OK, now in the future, there might be updates to it, which is why I recommend that you guys allow for at least 256 characters just so we make sure that we can actually have all the characters inside the database. But just know that if you don't actually get the password inserted inside the database when a user signs up, then you need to check if you allow for as many characters as a has password actually generates. OK. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to actually dehash a has password. So if we go back inside the code, 
I'm going to go ahead and go underneath here. And I'm just going to go ahead and just comment out what we have here so far. Then I'm going to create a variable called input, which is going to be what the user actually types in when he goes to your website and tries to log in. So we're going to set this one as test123, which is the password he types in. Just going to move it out. And then we're going to create a second variable, which is going to be called hashed password in database, which basically means that this is the password we have inside the database. So right now, I want to actually copy what we have up here, like so, which means that right now, the password inside the database now needs to be used in order to check if this password is equal to the password inside the database when the user actually logs in. And you might be asking, well, right now, test123 looks like test123, and the has password down here is going to look like this long string of text. So right now, these won't actually match up when we match them up inside our code. So what we need to do here is underneath here is we need to do a function called password underscore verify, which is the other side of the coin when it comes to password underscore hash. So the password underscore hash hashes the password and password underscore verify actually dehashes it. So I'm going to echo out the function called password underscore verify parentheses, semicolon. And then I'm going to insert two different parameters. I'm going to insert the password the user typed in, which is input. And then the second parameter is going to be the password from inside the database, which right now looks like gibberish. So once we do this, and then I refresh the browser, you guys can see we get a one, which means that the passwords do actually match because one is equal to true and zero is equal to false. So right now we did actually get a match when we match the two passwords together. So this is basically how you can has and dehas data before inserting it inside a database. Now, in case you guys want to see a real life example of how to actually use this inside, let's say a login system, then I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video so you guys can see how to use it inside, for example, a login system. Now the link in the description does actually send you to a complete tutorial on how to create a login system. So if you guys are also interested in learning how to actually build a complete login system, then you can also watch that video if you want to. I just want to point out that inside my login system tutorial, I'm using MySQLi in order to interact with the database. So if you guys want to learn how to do it using prepared statements, you need to download the lesson files from my login system tutorial because inside the lesson files, I have an example of how to do it using MySQLi and I have another example of how to do it using prepared statements. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.